Welcome to Oddball History, dipshits. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, let's talk about some history. Let's talk shit. about some history. Let's some about oddball history. history. Oddball history. Plug. Yeah. Boom. But uh, yeah, actually today on this week, I enjoyed this topic a great deal, and I hope you all do too. We're talking about Lester Hemingway. Oh, oh good old Lester with Hemingway. He wrote several good books. Yeah, I remember uh, these but books. not as good as um, his brother. This is the main reason why he's famous. This is Ernest Hemingway's younger brother. Ah. Younger it's, by 13 years. Yep. Sort of the Billy Carter of the literary world, if <laughs> yeah. you will. Yeah. Billy Carter. You don't hear Billy Carter brought up nope. in conversation Not very enough, often. But I it was a Simpsons <laughs> reference. They so. did say that uh, Billy Carter like pretty much killed himself because Jimmy got famous, and he was always upset about it. Oh, oh really? Wow. Yeah. It was he was like, like, I have the better beer. Because he had a beer. <laughs> yeah. Billy yeah. Carter did. It uh-huh. was called Billy Beer. What a great thing to do when your brother becomes president. By the <laughs> yeah. way. I'm going to come out with a beer. How can I'm we... not going to think on the name. I'm going to call it Billy Beer. Yeah. How can we get some merch going? My brother's a president. I'm not doing great. <laughs> it makes you wonder why Pippa Middleton did it. <laughs> bless you, Lord. Oh, bless sorry. You. God. I'm sorry. I am it's dying. Tight. Makes you wonder I why, dying. why Pippa sure Middleton didn't come out with a beer, you know? She should have. I really... would have bought Pippa Middleton's beer. Pippa beer? She looked. You beer drinkers? You guys no, do you Pippa Middleton? Drinker. No. no. Kate Middleton's sister? Yeah. Oh, these are royalties, right? They yeah, I are. I suppose, yeah. yeah. That's right. Scott, are you going to go on a run about Pippa Middleton? No, I uh, no, I don't have much else to say about her. <laughs> I have uh, not thought about her in years. <laughs> okay. But, but Kate, I, Kate Middleton is allowed on the podcast. Yeah, um, so is Pippa. Mike and and I have not seen like the wedding pictures of Pippa. I remember Pippa Middleton was, it was like a big, she went a little viral because everyone's like, damn, look at Pippa Middleton. Oh, yeah? Yeah. She, hot lady, she, hot lady. Pippa. You know who wasn't yeah. really a hot lady? She was a good-looking lady. Lester Hemingway. Lester Hemingway. You know what I love <laughs> about Lester Hemingway is Lester Hemingway looks like hauntingly like his brother. So yeah. after his brother was dead, people would still always come up to him and be like, "Oh my God, are you Ernest are Hemingway?" You? And he like had a whole bit for it. He Did said, he? "Yeah, he had a whole bit for it." Oh, he I would love say a bit. he was I love um, a good bit. He would say, uh, <laughs> he would say he was. Um, from the Marine Corps, he was like, uh, he would say, Jack Dolan, U.S. Marines. When they would say, hey, do I know you from somewhere? He'd go, maybe. Jack Dolan, <laughs> U.S. Marines. Uh, and then uh, the, the people would walk away confused. And then he had even a line for that. His line after they'd walk away, he'd go, I tell them I'm Jack Dolan because I get tired of telling people I've changed my name from Tolstoy. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, not like bad, it. Les. I like all right. not. All right, but it could bad. be better. It, it could be better. All. I think also, it makes me kind of sad to think, like, if you have, like, a stock bit for this happening, just how often it people are coming happen. up to you and looking at you yeah. with a haunted look and being like, are you your brother who killed himself? And you're like, no, I'm the other. I'm the one who hasn't killed himself yet. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. For yeah. the yeah. end of the episode. <laughs> No, I, yeah, so, that's so a, I, I didn't know Hemingway had a brother. Yeah, he had like six siblings. It was a big family. Big, oh, okay. They were all born Catholics. like Catholics. Yeah, Catholics. Oak, oh, Park, Chicago. Oak Park, Illinois, like fancy area of Chicago. I have a friend from uh, grew up in Oak Park. Shout out Joe White. Shout out Joe, Joe White. White. Does Shout the best uh, Harry Carey impression uh, oh. ever. Hi. Didn't. Here's the thing. If you're Will a hot Ferrell. dog, would you hate yourself? Here, here's the thing. Everyone does an impression of Will Ferrell's Will impression. That's Joe White was. grew up listening to the real Harry Carey oh, be okay. so it's wildly authentic. drunk on daytime <laughs> yeah. Cubs games yeah. and calling them. So he had his own thing, and it killed me. It was so good. Yeah. I've been drinking. Ron Santo. He would talk about how he would just bring up old Cubs players <laughs> yeah. for no reason in the middle of the game. Ron Santo. I don't know. Yeah, shout out Joe White, uh, Oak Park, Illinois. There we go. But so uh, he actually was he was an interesting guy in his own right. Yeah. It's just like being the little brother of a more famous interesting guy. Yeah. It's yeah. a very Seth Curry situation. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, Steph Curry has a brother named Seth Curry. All right. Who I, is also in the NBA. I uh, uh, delivered yeah. Cheesecake Factory to him one night in my role as a favor driver uh, a while back. Big deal. Uh, yeah, it was cool. I was excited. Um, then we traded him away. Uh, but he's back now. <laughs> <laughs> but he's back now, which is good. why was there so much hope? In my book? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe we're gonna, we're gonna make it this year. Those Dallas Mavericks. Fuck yeah, we are. Hey, 
But yeah. it's like by every right of his own accord, he is a wildly successful athlete. Just being a professional basketball player for as long as he has. In any family, he is like the winner of the family. Yeah. Mm. It just so happens his brother is like a generational oh, talent. Yeah. So no one cares about Seth Curry. Reggie Miller, too. Do you know the Reggie Miller story? I didn't about know his Reggie brother played. And Cher well, Cheryl is his older sister, uh -huh. like one of the greatest women's players of all time. So there was one time that I Reggie... I already don't care. Reggie had right? the uh, best game of his uh, career in high school. I forget how many he scored, but he like really killed it. And he was always being overshadowed because his sister was just like a basketball god. And uh, so he had the best game of his career and came home all excited, ready to tell her, like, oh, man. And it turned out that that night in her game, she had scored 100. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Went fucking Wilt Chamberlain on his ass. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, so he... he one of his big books was called the uh, what is it? The Sound of the Trumpet, which is about his experience in World War II in France and Germany. Like also a soldier, nice. also a wild tough guy. Like this is the family bred it. That's what they were doing. Had a cool mustache, very and cool beard, mustache, like like Hemingway. But then sadly, his most famous book was My Brother Ernest Hemingway. Oh God! He wrote the biography on Ernest Hemingway after he died. Yeah, and so that became like Hemingway really on Hemingway. Which Hemingway. I, was, uh, <laughs> I was glad to read that it's still considered like the the best uh, Hemingway biography. Yeah, and I, and I love that because it's like suck it, nerds. You know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all got bested by old Les Hemingway. Old this Les. guy is starting countries on rafts and yeah. And so using actually using the funds from that book. He then went and started his own country. I mean, he okay. used the funds well, this is for, getting interesting for everything yeah. for the rest of his life, I think. I think most yeah. of his life... Wait a second. You remember in uh, I Think You Should Leave when the lady's talking about how she got her money from being sewed up into the pants of Charlie Brown at the Thanksgiving Day Parade in the city, had to pay her a lot of money? <laughs> no. <And> she's like, <laughs> no. She's like, I'm not getting any richer. It's just this amount getting less until I die. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how he was with the success of yeah, his brother. Yeah, there we go. That's exactly what I was thinking of, his, too. His so brother... Y'all need to watch more. I think you should leave. Fred. That's a great sketch. It is a very good. It's a, a really great funny show. sketch. So he it's he, like a he, Shark Tank parody. So from the success of Hemingway on Hemingway, yes, that's the that's the one that actually paid him money. Yes, uh, he said, "I'm gonna start my own city." Yes. Where I'm the best Hemingway. I'm the best. My brother <laughs> never started a country. Yeah, exactly. And so off the coast of Jamaica, he started New Atlantis, which yeah. was an eight foot by thirty foot raft. You guys ever been to Jamaica? No. I went to Jamaica Don't once. say the fucking story about the cruise. Are you about to do it? I've been Why to would you? I, I try passing the ball, you motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, God damn it, it's a podcast. I, what a great time uh, on this podcast to tell the fucking story. I three bought a hat. I bought a hey, hat Lawrence, and I Lawrence, and dread stitched I've never to been it. to Jamaica. Okay, well, I have. You want to hear a story? I a beanie that had dreads stitched into it, and I walked around the wait island. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It had dreads stitched right into it? Into it, into wow. it. Something I don't think you're allowed to do anymore. <laughs> um, but, um, <laughs> Not where I was going. I was just impressed by the ingenuity. I like that idea. Yeah. It was great. And I, I walked around the island telling everybody, uh, you're just making me crazy. Wait, so for you're new, Jamaican me crazy. <laughs> yeah. Not Jamaican me crazy. No, no, no. It was a play on words. Well, yeah. Jamaican me. You're Jamaican me crazy. Not Jamaican me. Shout yeah. out to all the new listeners who don't know that is the fourth time Lawrence has told that story on this podcast. <laughs> I have never told that story on this podcast. <laughs> I'm going to create an uh, edit for this and go back <laughs> to the archives. This is the fourth I've time. I've never told this story on this podcast. You have I don't know told the count. Many times. I think you have, but I don't know that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think it was oh, wow. a lot, and maybe. I, I drink a lot. Scott. Uh, <laughs> saying I think you have with the amount of weed he smokes means he's heard it four times. <laughs> well, That's what I, that means. We're still is enjoying it, aren't we? We're still enjoying right. it. <laughs> yeah. But he it was an eight foot by 30 foot raft that he uh, floated out 12 miles off the coast of Jamaica. Like a pirate. Like a pirate. Okay. Well, and he had a he, he had this like weird like legal backing for what he was doing. The Did Guano, you hear that? The Guano the, Islands Act. The Guano Islands Act of is 1856. It, it is. It is. Okay. But it also this includes says, the uh, the poop of seafaring birds of sea as well. Birds, yes. Oh, okay. It says if uh, basically if there's an island in international waters that has seabird or bat shit on it, it can be claimed for the U.S. If it doesn't have, if it's not currently like under the banner of a country it's finders keepers rules back then where you could okay. just even if it was just like a grouping of rocks that were like out of the ocean and there was birds shitting on it you could be like that's the u.s is now 
Yeah. What yeah. a weird way to mark territory. It is. But uh, cause I think So you, you just gotta keep your raft clean. You got uh you, the opposite, you gotta keep it dirty. So you can get more shit on it and then boom. Okay, so if it, it has shit on it, you can keep it? Yes. Then it's part of the US. Oh okay. but so half the raft was the United States, the uninhabited side. And the other half of the raft was its own country called New Atlantis. And I'm not very good at math. So like eight by 30, you said? It's like, like a room. Like it's a, like a room. Like a bedroom in an apartment. Like this room? No, this is probably like half this room. Okay. Would be like, like, like think of like a, just a standard bedroom in an apartment is the country of New Atlantis. Uh-huh. And the neighboring bedroom on the same raft is the United States. Okay. So you're saying there was an apartment on this raft? <laughs> yeah, technically. <laughs> but and then there were six inhabitants, all of which were his family. Like, he had little kids living on the raft them with titles. Him. Yeah, pretty awesome. Yeah. But it, I think... Why I bet they, it was not awesome. It was I, probably not I, awesome. But it was not story. awesome at all. <laughs> yeah, being Les Hemingway's kid seemed like a real adventure. He was always going off yeah. doing wild shit. But why guano was so important was, uh, at that time, it was one of the most like effective fertilizers... And it was before all the like in- industry figured out how to you know process nitrogen out of things and phosphorus and all that stuff, and so guano actually had a tremendous value, where they said it was like a, th- a pound of it was like a third of the price of silver. Oh, okay. Like so, it was just super valuable to have for like agricultural stuff, and it was could you put it in gunpowder and it had a bunch of industrial purposes. So Did guano they put, was they put guano in, in bullets. Yeah, like gunpowder, hmm. or they could, but uh, it's still on the books today. And there are still 10 islands that we claim as part of the Guano Act. Nice. Uh, one of them, including Midway, like the important, it was just an island in the middle of nowhere that was halfway to Japan in the Pacific. And we just claimed that because it had bird shit on it. And they we're like, well, we're going to use this as a military base. We have base. treasured memories there. <laughs> a lot of good that's men our, died there. A lot that, of good that's, men. Uh, we also claim it under the Treasured Memories Act. <laughs> yeah, of 1914. That was a good one. Yeah. But it actually had a lot of economic ramifications where like, it's kind of like having mineral rights on a piece of land. Mm-hmm. If you have a territory that is legally controlled by a country, there's like rules about the surrounding area of that. You have the fishing rights to, you have the mineral and oil rights to. And so that wasn't important at the time. But then in the future, there's like a rock in the Pacific Ocean that we have the rights to drill around. And it's because like we've had that rock for 50 years. That's our rock. So we've made a lot of money off of randomly huh. claiming shitty islands nice yeah i like uh i like this idea i like randomly claiming shitty islands you know <laughs> yeah. makes you think i we should try to squat more places yes you know we're pro squatting here let's just we're very like, squat in a, in a mansion let's see like i thought we could stay there for a while probably a few months before they i thought about out. you could squat in a nebraska furniture mart <laughs> You know how long you could how last. long would like you could be in there forever and they would never have you seen yeah. how fucking big Nebraska furniture Mr. Is? Beast get on this you can get lost in they there. gotta have somebody like on a camera watching though because like you just slide up under a duvet you know what I mean just yeah. just I, pass out. I think you could be like you have to do it early before closing yeah just like find your little cubby to get into and just, just be real still I'm not sliding into you the could cubby. live in a really big Walmart Ooh, we had you can a, make uh, a room. I always figure find a. <laughs> they had a homeless guy that lived. I forgot which hospital it was. I think it was Baylor, but uh, he was like a homeless dude and he was younger. And he found like he got community college. Like we, when we do EMT and paramedic school, you have to do clinicals with hospitals. And so uh, he got like the little T-shirt we wear that says like you know student of Dallas County Community Colleges, and he just showed up. And would go help out like a bay and would just act like an EMT intern. And then uh, at night, he would just kind of go find an unused room and sleep in it. And then every day, he'd just go, because, you know, it's a giant hospital with all these different areas. So he lasted like four months Damn. of living in a hospital until people started asking him medical questions. They were like, wait a second, what's this? And he's like, oh, I don't know. That should be a movie. That's yeah. fucking hilarious. It was pretty good. What a smart dude. I'll never be able to pull that off. One of those, like, you should probably you know apply that to something else, though. You know why? Yeah. I don't, you know why I couldn't an do that? Island. It's because of, uh, I don't have the chutzpah. Yeah? That's fine. That's that is a great fucking you're word. Not that was my of word of the day. Yeah. You're not Did enough you like of a how mensch. I throated it up like a fucking, like a real, yeah, fuck yeah. Like a real who, who, I, I nailed that pronunciation. <laughs> All right, I think I'm getting offensive territory. Yeah. But. 
Great pronunciation. <laughs> and so the, the point, the point of the island, it had a point, is uh, it was trying to like a scam type deal where he was trying to sell coins and stamps from this country <laughs> to try to make money <laughs> to fund marine research he was trying to do in the area. So it all kind of had a, like a gimmick to it. But then uh, he lived on the island for two years, and then a storm blew it away. The uh, island, the big raft. He uh, lived on a raft. Isn't that the way it always happens? And then you it was, start a micronation, and it's immediately blown away, away. by a hurricane. <laughs> by a fucking and hurricane. And it was blown away by a tropical storm and ransacked by fishermen, <laughs> which I enjoy. That's how all good countries end, being ransacked by fishermen. Yeah. I like how they started. You're like, yeah, him and his family. I mean, it sounds like a fun time. Like, this sounds <laughs> yeah. terrible. This sounds yeah. Awful. For a, uh, I don't know. It probably had some good days. I mean, he did <laughs> find Atlantis. That's something, you know. <laughs> the new one, yeah. He found. Uh, oh, he, no, he, the real Atlanta. Do you remember the? T- did you read about him taking the A and E crew to Bimini and showing them like where Atlantis was? And they, uh, because he showed them his proof that it was Atlantis, was he took him to this place called the Healing Hole? And the daughters <laughs> swore. Great name for a strip club. Yeah, the heal- <laughs> Healing Hole truly is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they swore Four that bar. the healing hole had uh, cured their father of gout. So if it wasn't Atlantis, how come Les didn't have gout anymore? Hmm? Well, really how, about that, how about that smart guy? <laughs> 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 All our smart guy listeners out there, prove but, it wrong. Uh, yeah, no. So uh, what else is going on after it blows away? <laughs> I was I was lied on that part. I was more. <laughs> Reading about now, and so it blew away, and the island is gone. And he just no one really tried to remake it. <laughs> Dreams dash. It's just like, should we? We already got the island. Should we redo it? And he was just like, Nah, I think we're good. Uh, we had a, yeah, we had a good run. Yeah. And then uh, I thought this was also funny in a dark way, is that he copied his brother's life but did it worse. And then in 1961, er- Ernest Hemingway claimed his own life with a gunshot to the head. And in 1982, Lester Hemingway. Shot himself in the head as well. I really thought he was going to come on the pod next week. <laughs> I, um, every fucking time. Every time. Every fucking time. So wait. Uh, so he shot himself in the head. He had. Uh, I read that he had type two diabetes, and he had learned that he had type two diabetes, and that they were going to have to uh, amputate his legs. And he was like, "I have beautiful legs. Uh, I would sooner die than live in a world." Where I'm not stopping traffic with these gams. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree and, with that. And uh, he shot himself. And he did it. And who, you know, I didn't see his legs, but I uh, I'm sure they were great. They're nice. Yeah. You know, if he was willing to shoot himself over them. It did. I, I like when it said he shot himself due to complications with type 2 diabetes. And I was like, you don't think of diabetes as being like, like, like the complication. Like why did he kill himself? Found out he had diabetes. The complication <laughs> yeah. was this. Uh, I think that's <laughs> definitely a, a straw that broke the camel's back situation. Yeah. I, he had I some problems that. beforehand, I would assume. Yeah. Well, he if did. you're trying to start your own country and claiming uh, you found Atlantis and it cured your gout. Well, Which is now, what I was thinking is why so many of our stories end in tragedy and often suicide is that to do weird, wild shit like that, you kind of got to be a crazy guy. Yeah, you know? it's true. You're yeah. living on the edge. I, I, up, I think of suicide often, as, I, as I've mentioned on this show, and I think it bumps people out. But yeah. it's not, I don't think of it in no, a bad I think, way. No, I think how you read that is totally correct. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was writing about this yesterday. It's like, just the idea, it's like, I, I just like it as an option. Like, sometimes you look at a stack of bills, and you're like, I could pay these. That's or, what Hunter S. Thompson or, said. Or yeah. I could just kill myself. Hunter S. Thompson said, always said that he would feel very trapped if he didn't have suicide as an option. And then he shot himself in the head. That's yeah. A, I, just, I like it as a door. Oh, I read you know? this about, I didn't, I had never read. I'm a pretty big uh, Ernest Hemingway guy. You know, yeah. I love Sun Also big Rises. Uh, very, yeah, cool The Immovable dude. Feast. Oh my God. Did y'all see the uh, Immovable Feast? <laughs> the Immovable <laughs> I read the opposite. I read the old. Uh, I read, I read the, uh, <laughs> that was that, that, that was, was the response. That was the prequel. To that it. was uh, yeah. That was uh, I read, F. Scott Fitzgerald's response to he was yeah. like fuck that. It was yeah. very much like an ether. Uh, and That's me Jay-Z trying to sound smart with a book I read twelve years ago. <laughs> I read the old man in the scene. Stuff. That's probably the last time. I, that's probably when I yeah. read it before twelve. I mean, even longer than twelve years. Yeah. But, but my point, I was gonna say, I don't really know. I did watch the documentary about Hemingway, but all I really remembered about it is how much it bummed me out because he was he got so many concussions in his life. Yeah. That by the time he won his Nobel Prize, he like didn't go and give like a speech. Uh, 
at, in um, where uh, Norway or whatever where mm-hmm. they have it. Uh, he instead he recorded this video message because he wasn't well, and by yeah. that point he had been concussed so many times. And listen, it bums me out to say this. It sounds like I'm really making, but he talked like uh, all right in The Simpsons when Homer <laughs> here we go when Homer <laughs> when Mr. Burns is trying to hide the dumb employees from the inspectors, so he sends Homer and these two big dumb guys to guard a bee uh, underneath. There's just a bee in a jar, and they're and one of they knock the jar over, and one of them goes, "Duh, we done bad." And that's, <laughs> that's how, how Ernest talked. Hemingway oh. talked, and it fu- oh, it's so sad to watch. But anyway, this is a more uh, fun story. This is about uh, how their dad killed himself. Uh, well, it turns out. <laughs> He had uh, a lot of financial problems. So the dad and two of the sons did? Yes. Wow. Actually, the daughter referred to it as the family exit, which uh, fucking grim. Louis C.K. Really grim. Louis C.K. has a joke about it where he's just like, it's the ultimate end to an argument. (laughs) Where it's just like, how bad is it? It's like, it's not that bad. I also like the norm one about blaming some random person like your barber. (laughs) (laughs) Do you know this fella, Norm MacDonald? (laughs) Well, it turns out he took his life because of you. (laughs) It's fucking so... But anyway, their dad, Hemingway, the elder Hemingway, he was having all these financial problems, but Ernest had had started to uh, get the monies back from Sun Also Rises, which was a huge hit, you know? Yeah. So he sent his dad a check to pay a bunch of his bills and relieve some of the stress. But uh, he killed himself before the check could get there, which uh, is just it's so tragic, you know, that they didn't have Cash App at that time. <laughs> that is, you know uh, what I mean? Venmo would have really saved that man. That's yeah. a free ad. Imagine what you'll get if you send us some some money. Yeah, oh, you yeah. know, we think can about, talk about it. it every day. I'll 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 make light of Hemingway's dad killing himself a million times for you, Cash App. <laughs> But much like his That's life, the oddball promise. <laughs> That's the oddball <laughs> promise. <laughs> but much there like was... his life, in the podcast about him, we spent half the time talking about his brother. It's just inevitable. He's just yeah. a cool dude, you know. And uh, <laughs> I mean, whatever no, but he did. All right, here. Uh, I was also the story uh, I was going to tell you about uh, about Les Hemingway. They went and. Uh, Okay, so the president and announced before World War II that there were there were Nazis in the Caribbean, mm-hmm. and so Lester and a friend of his, and he said this himself. They it's were weird like, to think of Nazis in sunny places. Sounds know, right. It really right? Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's always like just imagining like a dude in that yeah. uniform on a beach is just weird. I didn't know, like, put it in like on a words, sunny beach, but it yeah. really is. It, there's a World War II in color that's about uh, Paris, you know, and how uh-huh. Paris was just the Nazis' playground after they took it over, and it is very fucking weird to see nazis on vacation yeah like they're on ferris wheels and shit but they're, they're all still in their uniforms you know yeah it's fucking uh wild Never takes a break but anyway so the government oh, says Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they, yeah, uh, that's, that's gonna be real it's it's a fun. Fun. It's gonna, <laughs> out of context Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like that? It's funnier. Yeah. It's, it's a, can it's, I get a, no, it's, it's a say, lighter can I get a thing? pixelated face on that one? Yeah. Like cops? <laughs> it's a, a Heil Hitler is a lighter thing on a Ferris yeah. wheel. It is. Yeah. So, yeah. It is. Everything's yeah. nicer on a Ferris wheel. You can say almost anything on a Ferris wheel. You could be like, I murdered my family. <laughs> you know, like, I, mean, it's just, I don't know. I don't know right. about the Ferris wheel. I don't know <laughs> what kind of Ferris wheels <laughs> you've been riding. <laughs> you know, carnivals are that scary is, places. I like it. No, I yeah, can, I can know, admit to crimes if I'm moving slowly. It's just funnier to do. It's like international waters. Yeah. Yeah. Can you admit to crimes on an escalator as well? Yeah. Is that like, I, I want to see you interview like a president or like some like some politician who's happened to admit to all these crimes. In a scandal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just on a Ferris wheel. <laughs> <Just on>, <laughs> I think everybody would kind of get over it quickly. Yeah, we, it's, you know? it's a forgiving place, the Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very forgiving place. Much like the healing hole. That, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the healing it's got, hole. It'll it's cure your gout. Yeah. yeah, it'll cure your gout. It'll cure what yeah. gouts you. So they hear. <laughs> <laughs> so they hear there are Nazis in the Grammy. So literally, they just are like, "Oh, this sounds that sounds like fun and interesting. We should go fucking uh, spy on them and see what we can see." But they're so yeah. they're this feels like a scam to go fuck around in the Caribbean. They're <laughs> sailing around. They're, they're, they're steaming around the Caribbean, uh, and you're really not allowed to just be kind of knocking around 
ports at this point because World War II is about to break out, so they need excuses. So luckily for them, there was bad weather a lot of the time, so they'd be like, ah, we got to stop here. And then, they, you know, they would spy and write down a bunch of shit. Uh, and they also, in case there wasn't a storm, they had in their auxiliary engine, they jammed a chunk of uh, mahogany wood <laughs> into it, into a cylinder in it. Yeah. So if anyone was like, why are you here? They could just point and be like, oh, the engine's fucked up from this uh, goddamn mahogany <laughs> We're going to get a block. mechanic to... It's oh, yeah. uh, fixed. Thanks it's for, thank God we stopped. Crazy how far it got in there. It's like someone hit it with a mallet a bunch <laughs> of times. <laughs> it's like we really jammed it in there. <laughs> so, not bad, you know? so, then, so they do all this, and then they report back to the government. They're like, yeah, they're Nazis at all these places, which I found funny because it was the go- it was the government telling them that they were Nazis invest- in the Caribbean in the fucking first <laughs> I place. I do like, like the yeah, idea no, of... We- he, him spending most of his adult life being like, how can I get paid to fuck around in the Caribbean? Yeah. And he figured it out for like 15 years. I love it. Yeah. yeah. He did it. That's a good idea. So he did. I mean, okay. Let's go so, fuck around in the Caribbean. Let's what do it. Doing? Spy on some Nazis. Yeah. yeah. They could still some, be down there. Yeah, Antifa's floating around we can, Jamaica. We got to go where, check it out. I know where we can get a chunk of mahogany. <laughs> <laughs> We're halfway there. Yeah. We are halfway there. I yeah. Can, so I that's can break the, uh, an engine. That's the story of Lester Hemingway. Lester Hemingway, we hardly knew we ye. We hardly knew ye. Mostly yeah, because your brother was so famous. It is, it is, it is like, it is, it, but oh. I think what's so depressed the suicide is like to do it the same way your brother yeah. did it yeah. is it's like, but it's less reported it's like on, like original. all his books, you know? Come on. It's like, oh, you also went to war and wrote be a book original. about it. But when the Virgin Suicides ladies did theirs, none of them copied another's method. I'd just like to point, I don't know why I'm getting all critical of yeah. Les Hemingway here at the end. <laughs> no, but uh, I, one more uh, funny story I read about him. The daughter said that one time, Les and his wife, they were having a seance outside and they accidentally yeah. summoned a demon. Oh, no. Oh, well, you just got to go to the healing hole. Throw <laughs> <laughs> that worry, demon in there. Don't worry, I got a solution to this. Out. It's going to come out uh, Did they saint. dig into what kind of demon they did? No, <laughs> it was mentioned very offhandedly. It communicated, they said, by moving the piano in the family room uh which <laughs> i hate it when i do that though like you ever accidentally just a totally pretty tame as far as demons go yeah just a totally stable fella you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's fine he's just using he's just using the piano as a blocking sled i love working I love that on his accidentally explosive released power. a demon and then they're like why'd you kill yourself he's like diabetes <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna take my sweet games <laughs> Not the game. <laughs> Dude, I ever see that King of the Hill where Cotton, uh, God damn it. Cotton <laughs> wakes up in the hospital and you know how his uh, feet are sewn to his knees? Yeah. Uh, you know, from the war because he got his shin shot off by a Japanese machine I just want to say gunner. this. Jimmy does not remember it. He I wakes up. No, I do. Yeah, I do. I I do. This is yeah, Hank Hill's he wakes dad. Up and goes, he wakes up and goes, do they got to sew my hands to my elbows? <laughs> Now, I remember the character. I do not remember that scene. But yeah, really, you 100% a, do not no, remember that scene. It's a late episode, but it's so good. I yeah. think it's the one where he dies. It's very <laughs> intense. It's <laughs> fucking really good. Though. They kept making good ones. Like, I, I didn't watch a lot of the later ones that they, like, when they canceled yeah. it and then came back. Like, I didn't catch a lot of those later ones. But they I'm, were solid, man. Tom Petty is lucky. Ooh. Fucking fantastic. Like, greatest, like... What an, a second act to your career, you yeah. know, being Big character lucky. on King of the Hill. <laughs> this and like he's like the best character. Like in the episodes he's in, he's the best. God I bless am. you, Tom Petty. We miss you. Rest in peace, Tom uh, and Lester and Lester Hemingway. But I'm yeah, constantly the family exit. Fascinated by what you do when you're not here. I, I can tell you, I, it's mostly smoking weed and watching cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is, uh, yeah, if it's I not fascinating at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if I were, if I, I were talk a about man. what I do here, it's <laughs> yeah. all watching TV. It comes out, it bleeds out a little. It's one hundred percent. There's been signs. Yeah, you do. I, I always love Lawrence and I laugh at it every time when you're like, "Oh, this reminds me exactly of season three, episode two of The Simpsons." <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the scene where? I only know the titles of the episodes. Yeah. I don't know the. I'm not some nerd. I don't know the <laughs> season and episode number of most of them. You but know? Not once. Like, not once when Scott says, "Do you remember this episode?" Have I, have I remembered, remembered that episode? Not you really? Time. Not one time. You I gotta time. watch more TV. I like, enjoy life hearing is it. Short. What yeah. are you doing? <laughs> You're right. Life You're right. is short, and you have a lot of shows to watch. Do you know how Get many well-written there. episodes of King of the Hill exist? I like. And stumble. it's gonna be tempting outside. It's gonna cool off and feel nice, and you're gonna want to go 
outside and do activities, don't but you do can't. It. It's, a, it's just a distraction from what you should really be doing. <laughs> the That's making the life. most of your life by watching as much TV as and possible not spending every a dime day. on Mario Kart. Kart. Yeah, not these, are the these are the rules. These are the rules. Not a, you hear me, Mario Kart? <laughs> you hear me, Mario Kart? <laughs> I'll take a free gold pass. I'm never fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Lawrence and I That's did a show word. together for the first time oh, in forever. Yeah, that oh yeah, yeah, that was. Uh, I, I, I felt a, a little left out seeing the picture after, but you yeah. know that's fine. We, she asked me if Scott's available, and I said no, he's not. Fuck. Yeah, we're just tired of you. Uh, <laughs> shit, shit. Hey. No, it was a stand-up roulette <laughs> show. Oh, I heard those were where they fun. do like they have I the little spin wheel fun. with topics, and you got to just riff on the topics. So it was a good time. <laughs> I had a great time. Like it helped me remember that like I can like just riff on a topic. Yeah, because yeah. I feel like I had a great set, but I, it was like it was like it was just nice to be free of. Last week I wrote something and brought it up like the same day, and I was like that same feeling. It was like, oh yeah, fuck, yeah. that's nice. I do have this muscle. I can you kind of forget yeah. sometimes, yeah. you know? Because like I remember like walking up to the to the two wheels, I was like, ah fuck, I hope like I think of something <laughs> to yeah. say here. And like the first topic I landed on, immediately I was just off and running. Oh, yeah. And then just like, by I the did time that, I got the oh, light, yeah. I was like, I could keep doing this. I did that where sometimes writing's like too easy. When like uh, I heard someone say, like, you know what they say about girls with mustaches? They got good pussy. <laughs> and you're just like, <laughs> well, I've never, okay, wait, and you're I'm like, sorry. Yeah, home. no one's ever, she's the first person to ever say it. Yeah, that was funny. Oh, okay. I liked and that. it's just like, oh, well, I liked that this clip. is just out of the box a good joke. Yeah, like you don't even have to comment on it too much. You're just yeah. like, oh, there it is. Yeah, but being pure just and in the moment is body. always yeah. like, here you go. It. Here's uh, the thing to say on it's stage. The best. The same way when you like think of an old story too. Yeah, they're like the beats of it just work. Like same, if I was yeah. just telling it to a friend, like yeah. you're like, oh, found money. I've done that where you have a story you tell, like just in conversation, and it's like a chunk. <laughs> it's like and a, then someone's just like, do you do that on stage? And I'm like, no. And I'm like, oh. There's just a story I've been practicing for six years. That, yeah. But you kind of, sometimes you don't want to say some stuff on stage, but. Yeah. Not me. I'm bearing my soul. <laughs> there, I'm okay. You, okay, Hassan Minaj. I'm giving it to yeah. you real. Yeah. <laughs> Emotional truths. I'm just telling you about the real shit. Like when my baby almost got anthrax all over it. <laughs> <laughs> because of my show, The that Patriot Act. That happened to me too. <laughs> Yeah, that happened. That, that happened to you, Lawrence. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's that crazy. Is that's crazy. <laughs> My baby actually looks like the kid from the Sandlot when the uh, when they're trying to recover the ball and the uh, vacuum this. cleaner we explodes. Got one. I, oh, we got one. We got you one. Remember that scene? When the yeah. vacuum cleaner explodes <laughs> yeah. and the kid's all dusty. Yeah, that's, that's how my kid looked, but with anthrax. Yeah. But because of my uh, truth-telling comedy bits, Hell I liked when he I upset uh, the powers uh, that be <laughs> by. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's With just too much truth. Too truth. much truth. <laughs> my emotional truths. Y'all excited for the state fair? Y'all state fair people? Oh, state I'm, fairs in town. I'm, Texas I've, state fair. I've, I've, I think I might go. I'm performing tomorrow. I've only been nice. there to do comedy, yeah. I think. Yeah. I've yeah. never. Yeah. I was You've a Six Flags kid. Ah, okay. I, and I would always use Fair Day. We got Fair Day in Dallas, of yep. course. Uh, but I would always use Fair Day to just fuck around outside, like yeah. extra weekend I, I day. I like performing at the State Fair because, like, they you just get all the free passes and the free parking. Oh, yeah. And they don't have nice. a kid. So I'm trying to take him next oh, weekend. Nice. Because yeah. yeah. then, you know, it's like, the performing there, it's like, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. But, like, it's not the most advantageous to, like, what a performance should be yeah yeah it just doesn't a lend random, itself a, to stand up a comedy meandering crowd of 50 fat people but it's, just, but it's one of my favorite now. things that ever happened no go ahead sorry the, the first year i did it uh uh it was like you were like in this tent and the audience like it was it, it, comedy has this crazy ability to create a bubble yeah where it's like there's there's so much foot traffic there's so much going on at the state fair and then as soon as sam comedy goes on they're like people just exodus it's like people can just feel <laughs> it's like people can feel like i think someone's telling you let's go this way honey yeah you know sure. and uh so the comedy needs walls yes it needs walls as soon as i start people are like i want to send that guy Ooh. anthrax yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i hope he has a baby yeah. um, but the new setup they have it in like in the garden area i think it's like way better nice. yeah the last I time i did it there it was way that's better. the last time i did it they had the garden too and they uh 
one of my favorite uh, fan uh, crowd audience interactions of all time happened there. It was a man. He was not watching the show. He was just <laughs> happening by, and yeah. I was doing a bit, just the setup of a bit about how I don't drink. I was talking about how I no longer drink and how it's like a medical thing. I was told by a doctor that I shouldn't drink anymore. And this man stopped. He was walking by, and he stopped where he was, and he yelled out in the most heartbroken voice. He goes, no! <laughs> No, no, you can drink. <laughs> and he said it like that, like he was so heartbroken about yeah. it. And it can't like for years. I was like, where like the tone of his voice, like where what it reminded me of. And I, I finally hit. It. I was watching the movie Eight Men Out when the you know it's about the 1919 <laughs> Black Sox. Y'all got to get some one. We got culture. one. We got one. We got don't one. know about shit. Yeah, you're right. We don't. The yeah. 1919. Black Sox scandal where they sold the world, they, they threw the World Series, you know, for a gambler called Arnold Rothstein. This is very <laughs> that's how popish like, American history here. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. That how do y'all like, have a history podcast? No. That sounds like something we should do an episode on. That seems in the vein. It's fantastic. It's, uh, we should. Yeah. Yeah, their owner was a piece this of shit. one that Lawrence frankly, and I can skip Frankly, recording. they should have been, uh, they should have like killed their owner. It should have been a bad bosses. It shouldn't have been them throwing the World Series. They should have just killed Charles Comiskey. But that's for another podcast. But anyway, there's this famous part, and it was famous before the movie. I guess it maybe it really happened, or maybe there was an earlier movie, but it was this famous scene where Shoeless Joe Jackson, the best White Sox player, is walking out of the courthouse, and this kid runs out of the crowd, and he goes, say it ain't so, Joe. That's how <laughs> I the drinking I man... That's how the drinking man. That that's was how Weezer. That's how voice. Weezer got the name for the Just song. Just to hear. Say it ain't so. Yeah. Say it ain't so. Uh, God bless the you, state Weezer. Fair, the first year they did it, I just had a dark memory. I just remember like the first year I did it, I showed up and like I couldn't find where the stage was, and I was, I was so uh, drugged up. Nice. Yeah, I was so drugged up, and then I just got a corn dog. The show was so like I got a corn dog my bitch up video, but <laughs> yeah. there I was so more like fun. A, yeah. a white button up, which I should not have been. But in the smack heat. my bitch up not video, but you're holding, but there's a funnel cake. You're holding a funnel cake the whole time. <laughs> oh, dude, I went on stage with, with a huge video? corn yeah. dog. Uh, uh, oh, hell uh, yeah. Oh, people love Last? to see people dogging it up on stage. You know, that's what I find. <laughs> these were these were dark times. People see me doing that. They think, wait a minute. Might not send this guy anthrax after all. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him there dogging I mean, it up. <laughs> he's a man of the people. He's got a corn dog. They had with a him. very good one. Last. I we usually go one day a year, and they had a, my uh, best corn dog was a had a pickle on the center wrapped in sausage, and ooh, then deep fried. Ooh, I've it's heard of this. Good. I think when I, I saw that. Good. It's hard to like make it because like you can only eat so much. Oh man, yeah. Yeah. right. You have so to like choose. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's to, like it's hard to like make a decision about what you're gonna do I've here. I've been burned by chicken fried bacon enough times. Oh <laughs> really? I can skip it now. So so is the person that's cooking it. <laughs> yeah, they've also been burned you, by. You, it. it's it's like tasty that sounds and disappointing neat, to me. But they give you like three slices, and you need one to get the effect. But it's like every bite, you just like feel your blood getting thicker. <laughs> You're just like, Jesus Christ. Like, I like sausage on a stick. Like, I get the corn dog just because it's kind of traditional. You know what I mean? The funnel cake will fuck, fuck your day up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just so much sugar. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, Did I you see Jamal me, Williams. Uh, no, Scott. For the <laughs> He's a fucking football player. No, I, that was aggressive. I'm trying to meet you on your left. <laughs> no. I, I, what, you... <laughs> what did Jamal Williams do? When he came oh, to the, the Saints, funnel, I have seen this. And he said the baby about the beignets. He was like, "They're just a funnel cake." He's like, "I'm sorry, I like the other food here, but beignets, yeah. they're just fun. They're just a funnel, funnel cake in a different shape." Welcome to New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to New like Orleans. His, one of his first interviews in New Orleans. I'm Dude, excited for the uh, always the first weekend of the fair <laughs> UTOU game. Red oh, River Rivalry. Yeah. What do they call it now? It has a new name. The Red River, it used to be River the, Rivalry. It used to be the so shootout. Lame. Yeah. yeah. I love how they're like, one of my best bits. Oh, I, I've thought about doing a bit. Uh, we can't call it the shootout, but we can still have a thing in the, ca the game called the Blitz, which unlike a shootout, Blitz is like specifically the Nazis thing. The Blitz creep. That yeah. was their deal. Remember but that? that not touched. But we can't <laughs> call it the goddamn Red River shootout. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here. I guess. Oh, okay. I see what they're saying. Shootout has become, you know what I mean? We're, yeah. we're, we're, in America, we'd be shooting out a little too much. Yeah. You know? We'll have all the <laughs> shootouts is, in the world, but we're not going to call yeah. them that. It's a football game, not a high school. All right. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's be yeah. adults here. Let's, uh, this is Saturday, not Friday Night Lights. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited for it. I'm rooting for UT this year. 
I also I'm rooting for UT in football. However, Friday night, both of my wife's brothers are on the OU rugby team. Oh damn! So I'll be going. Mm. They do the their little Red River shootout as well. But Friday yeah. night, and it's in oh. like a park. I think they're cl- they're at the club team, but they're still doing it. Nice. So I'm going to that, but that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm excited for it. See some beefcakes. <laughs> Do you want to come, Lawrence? Yeah, oh, prime there's beef beefcakes cake. there. The young yeah. beefcakes. Oh, I love a beefcake. A parade I love of a beef beefcakes. Cake. <laughs> Hitting each other, just slapping guts. <laughs> 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 that sounds awesome. So, uh, y'all wanna y'all got anything you want to talk about? You want to close out? Um, remember uh, October 26th. I'm oh, recording yeah. my special at Dallas Hyenas. Free October show. 26th. Comp for that? <laughs> yeah, you can actually yeah. comp for that. Please yeah. make your reservations. It's free tickets. Make your reservations ahead of time because it's important this thing sells out. We're going to be yeah. there. We're bringing people. It should sell out in the next couple weeks. So you got to get on that early. Please. Absolutely. Yeah, I just think- stole that from Tim Heidecker's dad and the production company thing. No, I don't have anything, I don't think. I was thinking uh, about the Charmin Bears the other day. Yeah. Are you guys sick of the Charmin Bear? I'm they sick of their cute. routine. Listen, I had made my peace. <laughs> <laughs> Get to where you want to go. I had man. made my peace with them, with their openness and talking about shitting. I don't agree with it, yeah. but I had made my peace with it. But this latest commercial is like where the dad bear, he goes, uh, it's also good for jacking off into. <laughs> That's too far, in that my is, opinion. You know? is, um, Thank you, Scott. And I know what you're thinking. <laughs> But Scott, Charmin is the best for jacking off into. And I know that. I'm not disputing that. Yeah. It's just a shootout situation. We just shouldn't say it, you know? That's all I've got. <laughs> Thank you, that Scott. Is, we have used shootout in several different ways here. Yep. That's you it. know? And, shootout um, three ways, like an episode of Chopped. We miss you, Les Hemingway. We miss you, Les Hemingway. Hemingway. And please come on the podcast anytime you want. Up there um, creating micro nations. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I trying like that to, idea of being in heaven. Be like, yeah. trying, finding an edge. Trying no. to sell <laughs> Jesus a title. <laughs> Half my raft is hell. You can't take that away from me. <laughs> All right. There you go. See you next. See weeks. you next time. <laughs>